I decided to mix things up a little bit for this video. The last two videos, one was me running through the four Pro Tour rounds for week 75. And the second video was me running through the daily process of how I score a daily tournament. And so this one I decided to show you a few runs through one of the more popular courses, Oak Hill. And this one has changed quite a bit now with the adding of roller discs. And so I'm gonna go three rounds and my usual bag of a Fuse River Explorer, uh, I now have a recoil, which has replaced my musket and two ballistas, my light glide and my roller ballista. So as for previous rounds, I'm not gonna use a putter. That's what my fuse is for. And one of the things you will hopefully notice if you ever wonder why or how some of the players on this game are able to score so well. It has everything to do with aces and long throw-ins. And so you'll kind of see a little bit of variety of some good shots, some bad shots, and this is just three runs straight through Oak Hill. And the first hole I went ahead and I've been experimenting with rollers and they don't always end up that well, but that one was pretty good within 52 feet. And if you watch my previous videos from 52 feet, I am not throwing that in, I'm putting because the fuse is very straight from that range out to about 60. So starting off with the eagle is pretty nice. And this one, you will notice all three rounds is just point shoot. Throw a river, throw it up there, get within 10, 20 feet, easy birdie. I mean, if you're not birdieing that one, you're doing something wrong. So river is pretty much the longer version of the fuse, which is why I've added it to the bag. So this hole, hole three for Oak Hill, there is really no roller option here, at least none that I've found that's useful. And so I usually just throw my light glide. And sometimes there's a little valley right about there that sometimes you get stuck in. And so sometimes you're in it, sometimes you're not. That one, I just turned it way, 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 way over. Left myself over 300. And so this one, I threw a sidearm recoil. Like, I mean, most of my shots are not that far out but I think I turned it a little too much to compensate for the wind and it just completely messed up. So really no shot of the eagle on that one. Um, hole four, I've, I've been messing with a roller and the aim points for this are all over the place. It just depends on the wind. And so sometimes I just barely miss the sign right there. And so this one, I'm just trying to throw it somewhere down in this valley and hopefully get it to roll up. And good shots like that, I mean, <laughs> Again, they don't end up that nice. I mean, I very rarely put it closer than 22 feet. Usually I'm in the 70, 80, 90 foot range where I've got to throw it in with a fuse, but that's back-to-back -back rollers that ended up very, very well. Hole five has actually been giving me problems lately because this used to be almost a gimme eagle unless it was into a headwind. And just with the ground play and the end flight of the, that light glide ballista, I mean, that was a pretty good shot, but I've, I've been leaving myself 80 to 100 on this hole pretty regularly, and that's not ideal. I mean, it's nice to be able to make those, but you don't want to leave yourself 80 to 100 feet on every single shot. Hole six with a tailwind of two, I'm going to go ahead and try to make the island with my light glide ballista. And unfortunately, with the 912 update, the ballista does like to drop off and hyzer out pretty quickly. And so I'm OB. I've got a shot here at par from 106 feet with the fuse, but yeah, in the previous version in 901, you used to be able to get it there, but it was much harder to stick it on the island. And then hole seven, this, this hole is just kind of a mess. So I've tried a variety of shots. The forehand likes to skip out way wide right. And so I'm gonna go ahead and try a roller here, but I'm actually gonna try a backhand roller. The forehand roller will get down the hill, but it has a tendency to leak out too far to the right and leave you with a pretty long shot. So here the backhand roller worked pretty well. It's just, you really gotta watch. There's a lot of rocks and different things you gotta avoid on the way down. So it gives me a shot from about 89 feet. I just missed one from 106 or 105. And so this one, I readjusted and nailed that one. And that's gonna be a common theme through these plays is if you really wanna throw good scores, whether it's the Pro Tour or daily tournaments, you really gotta work on those 60 to 100 foot throw-ins. 
And hole eight, I used to love to get this one. Now I just, I throw the light glide ballista and just hope I get somewhere on the hill. Um, you can you can switch out skip discs that'll kind of skip you up the hill a little bit, but the light glide ballista is just so hard to get up there now. And so that one rolled way, way, way back down the hill. And I could probably run this one hard, but I mean, from 171 feet uphill, if you try to run that one, you're going long OB. So I gave it kind of a half run, get my birdie, get out. Again, this is just experimenting and showing you guys kind of a walkthrough of what these holes look like. So I'm not going to run everything. And then hole nine, I don't want to say it's a gimme, but it's pretty standard. This is where I'm going to use the windbreak glide recoil. And it's pretty overstable, so if I just throw it up in the air, it'll slide down there. Pretty pretty easy birdie. And I ended up this round... Oh, Bush almost knocked that one down. but So I ended up with a 22-12 under. Pretty solid round. So what I decided to do for this video is I'm just going to click in and do another run through. No breaks. No disc changes, just right back into another run. And so hole one, I've now got a wind of three that's kind of a left to right tail. And so I'm gonna go ahead and go with an air shot. And this one just kept going and going and going and going and left me within, yeah, 57 feet. So this is about the range of my putts. And so I'm gonna go ahead and putt with a fuse. And I know a lot of you out there will probably throw that in, but don't be, don't be shy about putting those. You'd be surprised how far that fuse will go, or even your peers will go when you're putting those. So that was a good eagle to get. Hole two, not really much to say on this one. I mean, we talked about this first round. It's just a river, point, shoot, birdie, easy peasy. So back to hole three, and I think this is one of the harder eagles to get because you just have to bomb one out here. So I'm gonna throw a light glide ballista just you want to avoid there's a little valley to the right there so you don't want to go too far right or the disc just dies and so right there is ideal 134 feet and so i i feel pretty good about giving this one a solid run so i'm gonna throw my fuse and i thought midair i might get that one but it just came up a little short so but dead on no complaints about that one still got a birdie out of it and then this one, we threw a roller last time that got within, what, 30 feet. And so I'm going to go ahead and throw the roller shot again. And trust me when I say the rollers do not always work out like this. And so you notice it kind of gets a little skip on those hills. It bounces up in the air. And so you've got to watch where you aim depending on the wind. And so this was another really good one. Those are back-to-back -back good rollers. And this one's within 46. And you know I'm putting that one. If I'm putting from 57 feet last round, you know I'm putting from 46 or excuse me, earlier uh, this round. And then back to this guy, again, I just, this went from an easy eagle, like in the past, if that was a one tailwind, I, I would eagle this every time. Now you just gotta miss the trees, you gotta hope it doesn't roll out, and see that one kinda rolled out a little to the right, so you gotta be careful of that. And 53 feet, so you guys know what I'm doing if you've been watching, 53 feet is definitely putt range, dead center, get your eagle. So if you leave that one too far right, it can cut roll towards the water and leave you with almost no shot. And so we've already established I don't, <laughs> I couldn't make the island on that one. And so I went ahead and threw my river right up the middle. And so the purpose of throwing that river is just to set yourself up in this 130 to 150 foot range and give it a run with a fuse, aim a little to the left because the fuse does like to turn over. But that one just pretty poor showing, it was a little low, little left. And so that's definitely the range you want to practice. You want to make the 60 to 100 footers. And then once you feel comfortable with those, you want to bump that out to 100, 130, 140. And so this one, we've got a wind of three. So I'm not going to do the backhand roller because that was kind of ex an experiment. But I've got to watch where I aim here. Because if I don't turn this one over a little bit, that wind of three is just going to send that ballista flying. And so right about here, I thought it was pretty good. But if you notice, it did not land flat. It landed kind of on its side. And it just rolled and rolled and rolled and rolled. I mean, if that thing lands flat, it slides up to within 20 feet. Now I'm behind the tree, which sucks. But So I think I can make this one. So 105 feet, I'm going to give it a run. But what happens here is as I try to turn it over, it 
you couldn't, I don't know if you could hear it in the sound, but it clipped the tree just a little bit. But even if I didn't hit the tree, I was definitely going to be a little over it. And so the comeback putt from 67, I almost threw too high. But if you replay the video and listen to the sound, I think it clipped the tree on that one. So hole eight, same thing we talked about. I'm trying to get it up to the base of the hill, and hopefully it skips up a little bit to give me a shot, ideally 80 to 90 feet in that range. And so that one, I thought it was going to stick, and it did not. And it rolls all the way back down the hill. And any of you guys that complain about rollaways like that, that happens in real life. If you got a hill like that and it lands on its side, it's going to roll. So stop complaining. It happens. And so I'm all the way 200 feet out, so I'm even going to throw a river just to get it all the way up there. Again, just lay it up, get the birdie, get out. Nothing, nothing spectacular once it rolls back down the hill. Which leads us into hole 9. Again, wind, glide, recoil, aim up here. Throw it around the Mando, hope it slides down. And I like this one a little better than the musket, because the musket sometimes would actually sit up on the hill and not slide all the way down, so you'd sometimes leave yourself 60, 70, 90 feet. And so I just find the recoil gets a little further down. And so I ended up with the exact same score, 22, same as the first round. So now I'm going to run through it one more time and just try some different shots here. And so with a wind of three, it's kind of a left to right headwind. So I'm going to go ahead and try a roller here. And I'm still working on the rollers here. The roller first round got lucky getting through all those rocks and trees there. This one kind of turned out a little too early. And it's just going to keep rolling backwards. And so it just ends up being 170. So right here, though, I, I'm going to switch to a fuse and throw a sidearm. Because I feel pretty good about that 160 to 180 foot range. And so I am absolutely going to run this. Lower lower the arrows a little bit. Full power. And I'm trying to tweak the aim a little bit. But I really want to make this one. And so in the air, as soon as I let go, I thought it was in. Smash chains. But that tells me my distance was right. But my left to right was just a little off. And that's a common theme this round. That I'm going to have a lot of throwing opportunities and hopefully you'll see some some fun stuff and back to our easy hole two i aimed a little left because i thought the wind might do something with it and left it a little short but 24 feet pretty easy if i'm putting to 57 i'm putting 24 without too many issues so now we got the big water hole and i'm just i want to get this one once like i'd like to get each of these par fours at least once and so you notice this one's going right over that little valley. And if it hits in the wrong spot, see, right there. If that's 10 feet left, I get a skip. But in this case, it was not, so I left myself just in an awful position. So we're going to try the fuse here. And I went backhand. That's a little too far for forehand. And so I feel pretty good that I can give this one a run, or at least get it close. And in the air, it was eh, okay. Left it a little short, but... For some reason, I have not been doing very well with the throw-ins on that hole. I think part of it is because the pin is a little uphill. So I, I don't think I've been adjusting properly for that. Now this one, I've got a tailwind of three, so I'm not going to go roller. And I put a little turnover on the ballista, and that was just crap. I don't know what other way to say it. That was just a crappy, crappy drive. So to have a tailwind of three, and the best I can do is put it within 175, I'm a little annoyed. But again, it's in that 160 to 180 range where I feel like I could give it a run. So I do my sidearm fuse, and bam, I hit it, made up for that crappy drive. And those are those throw-ins I'm talking about. If you want to throw well, practice the throw-ins. So hole five, again, I don't want to leave this one too far out to the right. And anything down there, you're going to have a putt at it, but... You, you swing that too far out to the right. I've even thrown it 60 feet out to the right, and it's rolled all the way into the water. So definitely not as easy as it was in the 901 update, but it still should be one you should get. All right, this one I've got a tailwind of two, and like the first round, I'm going for it. 
but I'm going to adjust a little bit. Last one, I hyzered out a little too early, so this one I'm going to try to turn over a little more. And it was looking good, looking good, looking good, all the way clipped up, and I thought I might ace it. I did not, but anybody that wants to know if you can still reach that island, there you go. So you need a wind of two at least, but you also got to watch the, the angle you put it on. So that was most definitely a bonus eagle right there. So hole seven, so again, I've got a favorable wind, so I'm not gonna mess with any of those crazy rollers. I'm gonna put a little bit of hyzer on that because I know it'll turn, and I'm just hoping it skips somewhere down the hill. So right about here, I want a big skip, big skip, and it hits the tree. So I'm annoyed, but again, I'm in that range, 170 to, or 160 to 180. So it's downhill, so I have to aim a little bit lower, but I'm absolutely going for that and hit another one. And I wish I could say that every one of my rounds is like this, but I sometimes get these. If you ever see a score of mine and you're wondering how the hell I got it, sometimes those throw-ins are just clicking. I don't know how else to explain it. So hole eight, same thing. Skip up, skip up, skip up. It's going to roll down. It's going to... But it doesn't. It actually sticks on the hill. So I'm pretty happy with that one that I at least will get a shot at Eagle on this one. And of course, what do I do when I get a shot? I leave it short, which sucked. So didn't get that one on any of the three rounds. And ending us with hole nine, same standard shot, windbreak, glide, recoil. This one I kind of rushed and left it a little out to the left. And I'm tucked behind the bush. And on this shot, I, I was tempted to throw it, but I thought I could just power it through the bush. And of course, what happens? The bush knocks it down, and I miss a 20-some footer. So that happens to everybody. There's not much you can do about it. So you got to see three rounds on Oak Hill, all three 22s. So you'll get yourself three stars on that if you haven't gotten it already. A uh, couple strokes off my record of 20. But you can see a variety of shots. So the power of the rollers, if you do them correctly on that uphill hole and even on the downhill mando hole, if you want to mess with that. But you just got to be able to try a variety of shots from rollers to forehand to backhand. And really, 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 if you learned anything from these three rounds is if you want to score well, work on your putts, work on your throw-ins out to about 130, 140, even you saw a couple from 170. So practice those and hopefully you guys will see some success on your own.